evening and welcome to this meeting of the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education on Wednesday, September 24th at uh, 6 p.m. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Please call the roll. Beetle? Here. Eliason? Turner? Here. Herzog? Here. Saganek? Here. 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 We have a quorum. All right. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by uh, several students from Reed Elementary, Kaylee Sievers, Blaze Van Hoof, uh, Andrew Shadel, and uh, Madeline Millette. Uh, please uh, rise and come forward and uh, the rest of us could stand and follow them in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, next is the uh, public hearing on initial resolution to issue bonds for energy efficiency projects. Uh, do I need a motion or can I just call this to order then? Okay. Uh, reading of the published notice. Public hearing on initial resolution to issue bonds for energy efficiency. Uh, the school board hereby calls a public hearing to be held by the school board on September 24, 2014 at 6 p.m. in the boardroom of the district office located at 215 South Eagle Street, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 54902 for obligation purposes, for informational purposes, only regarding this resolution, the project, and the proposed general obligation bond financing. Section 67.056A AM1, Wisconsin Statutes, provides in part that a referendum is required on the question of this borrowing only if a petition is filed within 30 days after the public hearing signed by at least 7,500 district electors or 20% of the district electors voting for governor at the last general election, whichever is the lesser. If no such petition is filed, then the resolution shall be effective without a referendum. C, presentation of the energy efficiency projects and corresponding financing. D, guidelines for public comments to be established uh, by school board president. And E, public comments on proposed borrowing for energy efficiency measures. All right, uh, so we are now on to C. Jim Fox and Glenn from McKinn Street to just give a little overview. Thank you, Sue. Uh, we're here tonight again to discuss the energy exemption that was brought before you uh, in August. Uh, again, this is a projected two to three year energy exemption policy. Uh, this is a continuation of the previous exemption, po uh, exemption projects that we've had in the past. Uh, this energy uh, exemption is a projected to be a $14.5 million energy exemption. Uh, it will entail uh, work in six different facilities, and uh, it focuses on HVAC, HVAC control updates, lighting improvements, roofing and building envelope enhancements. Uh, oh, we have this. As indicated in this slide, uh, it, we really break down per building our, our focus over the $14.5 million over those two to three years. Our initial focus would be as part of the Lakeside Classroom Edition renovation slated to begin and com be in completion of next year, 2015, for the 2015 school year. Uh, the remaining 
order of uh, building projects uh, would be determined as part of the scope of work on what makes most sense for the school district. And just to clarify, uh, for Lakeside, uh, what you're referring to in this is not the addition itself. It is, it is the, not. Uh, it is the uh, upgrading of HVAC and, and uh, boilers for that building. Correct. It would be uh, the removal of the old boiler, um, um, some window enhancements. It would be HVAC. all windows and doors, uh, which would then be coordinated to um, be matching to the to the new facility or the new addition, um, uh, both boiler plants. Uh, there are two separate single boiler plants that serve that facility, and they would both be replaced and put in with one boiler plant serving the whole building. I just wanted to make that clear for those who are listening. Thank you. Um, as we can see, this is an example of some of the uh, mechanical items that we would like to address by removing Again, some old steam boilers, uh, some extensive building envelope, tuck pointing, and, um, and uh, elimination of some of the ventilation tunnels by adding unit ventilators to classrooms. We would like to open it up if there are any questions specific to um, any of the um, revenue exemption packages that we discussed. The board have any questions? No? Well, the financial impact, we talked about that before, it's 16 cents um, per thousand is the estimate for almost the life of the um, project until you get down to the last three years of the 20 year, we're proposing a 20 year bond. Um, and so to fit this in with our current debt schedule, it keeps the payments pretty consistent with what we currently have until about 17 years out. Um, and then some other debt drops off, so then this has been a large repayment schedule in the last three years. But it kind of keeps that, I mean, it does keep that 16 cents impact throughout the, the 20 years. What are some of the debts that would drop off before this would be repaid? Um, Oakland and um, the previous energy efficiency borrow. Thank you. And that's 16 cents per, you said thousand. Per thousand. Per thousand. Right. So per $16, thousand. Sixteen dollars on a hundred thousand. Yep. Okay, Doc. But anything can change that. I mean, they're making some estimations on property value growth. Um, so if our property value grows more, the impact would be less. Mm -hmm. um, they're making some state aid projections. Um, based on you know history of state aid, so if our state aid goes up, the impact of this would be less. So there's a it's, it's a projection that any that any variable could change this, but it's a, the best guess projection of what we know right now. Okay. Other questions? That's our presentation. We wanted to be right. fairly short because this is a public hearing for public comment. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, guidelines for public comment. Um, those wishing to uh, comment this evening, please state your name and address and clearly state your, excuse me, clearly state your name and address and topic you uh, wish to address. If you are acting as a spokesperson for a particular group or individual, please indicate the group uh, or individual, uh, the group or uh, uh, individual that you represent. Please limit your comments to the time allotted of 15 minutes, public comments rather than question and answer dialogue. Uh, state clearly and concisely the matters of concern. Remember that the use of specific names of district personnel may lead to legal liability. In such instances, please pursue the district's formal complaint process by contacting the superintendent's office at 424-0160 to direct your, uh, to re and they will direct you to the appropriate administrator. Uh, do we have anyone wishing to comment tonight on uh, the <coughs> item on uh, this public hearing, the uh, energy efficiency projects. Please state your name and address for the record. Tom Pollock, 757 Old Knapp Road, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 54902. I'll just be brief. Um, when I learned about this today, um, I just 
struggle with. I understand that improve, putting windows and doors are obviously going to improve efficiencies. Um, but to me, I just have to step back and say we just passed this large referendum, and now another $14 million right behind it. I, I just wonder when it's going to stop. I guess that's about all I can say. And I, I understand the process here of if there were enough signatures gathered, it could go to referendum, whether this could happen. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens, but I just, one citizen wanted to voice my concern. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other commenters this evening? Anyone else wish to uh, state an opinion or, or comment on the energy efficiency projects? All right, seeing none, uh, we will move on. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Uh, call the roll. Vito? Aye. Vito, aye. Eliason? Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Lumberger? Aye. 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 All right, we are now back in the regular session. Um, oh, uh, I guess we need another roll call. Uh, please call the roll. Vito? Still here. Eliason? Garner? Here. Herzog? Aye. Lumberger? Here. Saganet? Here. 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 All right, uh, board president's report. Uh, I have nothing on my agenda for this evening, so I will turn it over to the superintendent. Yes, so um, thank you, Mr. President. And um, this evening we have uh, a number of items uh, in the good news report, and I trust that Kim is set to guide along with us so, in the presentation. First one is a South Park student uh, makes um, uh, cards for uh, Beckett. Um, South Park students, uh, uh, South Park Middle School students, created um, well over 100 birthday cards for Beckett Rotorink, um, a four year old in Greenville who has incurable brain cancer. And um, uh, Beckett has been spotlighted in many news programs and social media sites in the past week, noting that he um, would love mail for his birthday. South Park Middle School students joined with many others from around the country in making this happen. So, um, a good beginning of the year uh, social service project. Congratulations to Anna Marie Kozlowski um, for being chosen Wisconsin candidate for the 2014-15 National Association of Student Councils um, Warren E. Schull Middle School Advisor of the Year Award by her peers. This is a preliminary step in determining the 2014-15 NASC National Advisor of uh, the Year. Uh, this is the highest honor that can be given to an advisor in the state of Wisconsin. Anna Marie's involvement in student council at the local, regional, and state level has been significant along with her willingness to serve as a WASC camp counselor. In the fall, she will uh, be sent to link with a four-page application, which must be completed by December 1st. Representatives from the NASC Executive Committee will review and complete the application along with others uh, for the recommendations. Those who are chosen from one of the eight regions will be in competition for the national award, which will be announced in June of 2015 at the National Convention in New Mexico. Some more South Park news. Sixth grade uh, teachers at South Park Middle School greeted uh, uh, parents and students to open house at the with a KR uh, code scavenger hunt. Students and parents were able to get additional information and resources by scanning the QR codes. Uh, parents uh, learn about the Infinite Campus app and how to access the math homework online. Uh, why allow reading um, 20 minutes each night is so important. Why reading 20 minutes each night is so important. Uh, believe in selfie uh, was another message from South Park. Worked with students in, uh, in their morning meetings earlier in the week. Families were welcome to the bulletin board stating believe in your selfie. Uh, students spend time locating their picture and uh, the pictures of their friends and show their parents. It will, will remain up in the hallway as a display throughout the year. The Oshkosh North High School student semifinalist for National Merit Scholarship. Uh, congratulations to Katrine um, uh, Dippins 
uh, who was a semifinalist for the 2015 National Merit Scholarship Program honors uh, our national top academic performers. Catherine will soon have the opportunity to compete with some 7,600 National Merit Scholarships winners or about for about $33 million that will be offered this spring. Congratulations to Catherine. Uh, Oshkosh North is very proud of you and all of your accomplishments. Oshkosh Senior Citizens uh, Center received a facelift. Uh, this is the crew of the Oshkosh North High School students volunteering at the Oshkosh um, Senior uh, Center. They are currently working on keeping up the Oshkosh Senior Center. The boys worked extremely hard to clear brush, trim trees, and make the Senior Center look great. Uh, thanks to all for their efforts. New opportunities for student learning uh, have continued in, in, in this early um, part of the year. Both teachers are already um, uh, doing amazing things. Oshkosh West teachers Kay Pickard and Beth Clark were particularly adventurous and agreed to dive into the unknown to help students. They're both running world language courses and with North students via a telepresence unit. These courses uh, would have not been available to all students in enrollment, but thanks to their enthusiasm and bravery, um, every student was able to get the education uh, they deserved by a partnership between the two high schools. Uh, two new members of the Wall of Fame. On Friday, September 12th, the Oshkosh West uh, High School Athletic Department inducted two new members into the Oshkosh, high, Oshkosh West uh, High School Athletic Hall of Fame. This year's inductees were Jenny Robbie, uh, class of 1999, and Adrian Taggart, uh, class of 2001. Uh, Jenny presented, uh, participated in diving and gymnastics at Oshkosh West and later uh, completed uh, in diving at Minnesota State University Mankato. Adrian participated in basketball at Oshkosh West and played for the University University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. He also played professional basketball in Spain for two years. Adrian and Jenny were recognized also at halftime at the Oshkosh West uh, football team uh, fo football game at Titan Stadium. Great books and grandmas and grandpas. On Friday, September 12th, the teachers hosted a great books with grandma and grandpas. Uh, the this event was well attended. I believe that um, uh, that 4K AM class. There were 21 adults. Uh, uh, coming for 19 children and the PM also had a very good participation. Grandparents and other members of the family were invited to join 4K children during the 20 minutes of their uh, class to read books together. We made uh, uh, the church conference room into a reading room and uh, books from the Oshkosh Public Library. <coughs> the uh, children performed their good morning uh, meeting song for their parents and then the reading began. Photos of the event were shared on Facebook page and, uh, and the event at the end of the event almost 200 people were viewed in the album. Uh, Facebook post of great grandma and grandpa. Congratulations to Oshkosh North High School must have turned two pages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Congratulations to all uh, to a most influential teacher as selected by North Senior High School um, uh, football players. Um, uh, you have a complete list. Uh, you have truly had impacted young men in a positive manner. Uh, we'd like to honor you for your wisdom, dedication, and commitment. Uh, all of uh, is shown to these young men and all the students who have taught throughout their careers. You're truly heroes to the community. Uh, this effort on uh, part of the coach and uh, uh, and his staff and uh, particularly his spouse is a wonderful event. One of the joyful things was to see a couple of kindergarten teachers recognized as being significant by high school seniors. Just uh, um, what a marvelous experience to have that uh, have them there. They they felt those kindergarten teachers felt kind of out of place at a high school event, but it was a wonderful recognition of um, high school experiences. Congratulations to Oshkosh North High School. Uh, Newsweek uh, 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 magazine um, uh, has recognized uh, Oshkosh North High School as one of America's top uh, high schools in 2014 by uh, Newsweek highlights schools that do outstanding jobs of preparing students for college. Oshkosh North was recognized for Beating the Odds School, which recognizes America's top schools for mm -hmm. low-income students. Uh, Newsweek collects data from reading, language, arts, math, to, uh, state scores from over 14,000 schools to begin determining which schools are making the difference in college readiness and graduation. Congratulations to the students and the staff of Oshkosh North High School on a job well done. 
the Merrill Way. Um, as you hear these themes throughout the district, you're learning more and more, and parents are hearing more about um, uh, the um, uh, overall um, classroom and school decorum that um, is being established across the district. Merrill Elementary kicked off the 2014-15 school year by acknowledging students with um, horseshoe hoorays uh, for showing the Merrill Way. Uh, be safe, be kind, be res responsible, and be respectful. Uh, keep up the great work. And uh, uh, that theme is crossing the district in many different places with slight modifications by building. Fall sale week for fifth grade students. Over 500 grade five students in the Oshkosh Area School District participated in the fall sale week from September 15th through the 19th at Menominee Park. Thank you to the Oshkosh Youth Sailing, our grade five teachers, parents, and many volunteers who made this event happen. September at uh, Jefferson Elementary, uh, getting started with um, PBIS. Uh, technology and student learning. Mrs. Kern's second grade class creating nonfiction book utilizing technology. And I understand that there is a hot button to press to show uh, a few minutes of a video relating to this. <laughs> we weave it all in in every which way. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, Traeger students, um, winners receive um, great staff service. Um, prize winners from Carl Traeger Middle School uh, scavenger hunt shows staff members to wait on them during their special lunch held on Friday. Uh, finally, uh, a list of um, all the many activities I've been participating in or attending in recent um, in the recent two weeks pe um, period, as listed on the report. Um, President uh, Weenoff, uh, that completes my report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Uh, other reports? Do other committee members have reports from subcommittees? Yep, Facilities and Finance ahead. Committee met on September 18th. Um, the budget variance report is the same as it was last time we met, a little over $2 million in surplus, with the majority of that being carryover. Uh, update on Oakland spending. Um, we're still looking at a storage, some type of storage capacity, but we're waiting on revised drawings. Um, so that's kind of, we're in a holding pattern there. A fence was installed along the north side of the playground, uh, but it's still open to the south. Uh, we did talk um, briefly about concerns that the children weren't able to use the playground equipment year-round that has since come back that yes they can and that they're going to fix it's just that it gets slippery and they were worried about falling and they've had some accidents last year so they're going to try to make some upgrades to the equipment so that that can so the kids can use it year-round the cork strips that were falling off um, Jim Fox is working on it he is um, doing a test of different adhesives and it was very exciting to learn about that so he's got one that is working he has I think it was a hammer or something Some pieces iron, of metal hanging onto and it's a still there after a week. So, so we so. think that's the one that's going to work. <laughs> we're hoping. So we'll keep our fingers crossed there. And the last was um, we were hoping to do something to block the view of the neighboring property to Oak Lawn, but the city city planning commission says no slats in the fences. They don't allow that. So Jim Fox is going to look into maybe some variants there. Okay. Then we moved on to the Lakeside update. The district has um, been meeting with parents and with the architect. Bray was kind enough to bring back a model of what their proposal is, and we've been kind enough to scale that back <coughs> due to the cost of their model, so we've got to tailor it, tailor it in a little bit. Um, there will be every effort will be made to make this building expandable, though, so that's, we have to make sure that that happens in case this, this area does uh, increase. Um, Black Wolf, um, if they are to participate in anything to do with that school, they need a design. And so uh, Mr. Mack has been kind enough to work with them. Uh, I guess they're going to put a survey on their website asking community members, you know, what they think of that. And let's see. Yeah, we got to make sure that we this project is done conservatively to avoid raising taxes, and we finally have a real commitment to the south side. So this has been a long time coming, especially for me. Uh, bills payable, we talked about bills payable process as well as policy 670, which is um, how we uh, asked the board to approve money. And they really kind of go together. The bills payable process is that we, 
we basically get the list of bills payable on the day of the meeting, and that's been a little bit troubling because if there's anything on there, we don't find out until minutes before the meeting starts. And so um, that was the concern. And essentially, um, since we only, since we get these, uh, the bills payable the day of the meeting, if we can't um, approve them, then we're letting vendors sit for more than 30 days, which isn't fair to the vendors. And it's for services already rendered, so that's something that we definitely don't want to do. So one idea was to um, approve bills at one board meeting but allow the business department to continue to pay. There were some other solutions thrown on the table, but essentially this is going to come back along with policy 670, which is how much do we need, you know, what's the thre threshold for the board to approve. Um, and we have really low amounts, like $2,500. We're operating with a $100 million budget, so we thought maybe that was a little bit on the low side. And then $100 for, you know, uh, even smaller purchases. Um, so we had looked at the bid requirements, what are the thresholds, um, <coughs> visa purchases, that's another problem that we're having that we can't see the detail on, on those purchases, so we need to look at that. Um, so they're going to review the policy, they're going to bring something back to the next meeting, which is October 23rd. That's it. Uh, President Wiedenhoff, I would just like to uh, augment one piece of, sure. some of the report. Um, the um, uh, the fence along the playground has been authorized, but um, when I was in the at the building a day or two ago, um, the fence is not up yet. So okay. it, it's uh, okay. the so it's um, we wouldn't want to mislead the public, but it's coming. Ah, okay, <laughs> very good. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Any other reports this evening? Education committee met on Thursday, September 11th. Um, most of the meeting was uh, spent talking about pupil services. Dr. Geigley provided a very thorough report looking at data of staffing and how people are staffed across pupil services, um, including the number of counselors, nurses, health assistants, psychologists, <coughs> and social workers. Um, the report indicated that there continues to be numerous needs at each building, not enough counselors, especially at the elementary level. Um, as a result, building principals are having to do other duties to assist the counselors. Oakwood and Traeger are the only elementary schools that have one full-time counselor. The remaining 12 sites share counselors either at a 50-50 or a 40-60 split. Social workers have half a day per week per elementary school, and the remainder of their time is divided between middle school. Um, nine buildings have health assistants who are LPNs with four as registered nurses. Um, psychologists are allocated um, as, as they can be some years had retirements and resignations, so the data isn't always clear because of retirements and resignations. Um, doc, the committee asked, and, and Dr. Geigley is gracious enough to also add the national ratios into the data so that we can see how the number, how pupil services is staffed aligns or in our case doesn't align with the national um, ratios which most districts don't this is nothing new um, but he's going to add that so we can at least see what the national average uh, ratios could be in an ideal world um, then he went on and, and talked about the grant that was awarded to OASD for about thirty nine three hundred ninety five thousand dollars that's right. per year. Per year, yeah, this for will like allow three for three FTE, two direct service counselors, and a third counselor who will serve half time in a counseling role, mm -hmm. and then half time as kind of a project director, gathering data, analyzing, kind of pulling it all together. For how many years? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Three FTE. Three FTE for three years. Yeah, it's seed money, pretty much. It's seed money, and so the the project director, along with I'm sure support staff, is going to help to provide data that hopefully then we'll come back here and we can decide or the board can decide how that needs to be sustained but it's seed money um, and yet it makes small inroads mm -hmm. because even with those uh, two direct service counselors and a third that's 0 .5, 0 0.5 director we're still lacking um, because of the numerous mental health issues um, it's, it's still a huge issue so then that kind of segued into the Catalpa project. If you remember that last year that was approved, that's proven to be successful. And Dr. Guiley had data on that of the number of students that had been served 
um, absenteeism decreased, and two thirds of the children in the classrooms um, have the teachers reported there was a decreased level of distraction, which meant more time on task, more time learning. And a majority of the teachers said they were satisfied with the program, so that seems to be doing well. Uh, and future meeting will be October 9th at 9 a.m. All right, thank you. Other reports? All right, seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to the technology plan update. Oh, it's a written report, right. Okay, uh, you're not planning on presenting at all. No, nope. all right. Uh, Non-agenda related public forum. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight on an, a, on an, excuse me, on an item that is not on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, we will move on to agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight on an item that is related to tonight's agenda? Again, seeing none, uh, we will move on to the consent resolution agenda. Uh, for the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item, or as discussed at a previous meeting, these will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any items, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. Uh, so far, I have uh, 6A, 7, and 8. Is there anything else that one wishes to pull? Anyone? No? All right. Uh, then the board will consider approval of one minutes of August 27th, 2014 regular board meeting, two minutes of September 3rd, 2014 special board meeting, three minutes of September 3rd, 2014 executive session of special board meeting, four minutes of September 10th, 2014 regular board meeting, five bills payable, nine contract with UW Oshkosh to conduct a survey regarding open enrollment, 10 2014-15 Oshkosh area school district budget, and 11 pre-K through 12 supportive and alternative education plan. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Eliason. Garner. Aye. Garner. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Lumberger. Saganet. Aye. Saganet. Aye. Wiesenhoff. Aye. Wiesenhoff. Aye. Dito. Aye. Dito. Aye. Motion carried. Resolution 6A. Be resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, retirements, and salary schedule as filed with the Secretary of the Board of Education. Temporary appointment of Abby Langkow, uh, one kindergarten teacher, Emmeline Cook Elementary School, effective October 1st, 2014. You don't have to read these. Oh, I don't have to read the whole thing? All right, great, no problem. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? I had asked that this resolution be pulled. Uh, every time I see a personnel resolution, um, Particularly when it involves resignations and retirements, um, I have mixed feelings about the individuals whose names appear. And tonight is no exception, because I know that the people listed as retirees or those resigning have made a positive impact on student learning and growth in this district. And um, <clears throat> during my 20 plus years in the central office, um, I had the opportunity to work with two very fine gentlemen in the role of they had different titles, but essentially was Director of Pupil Services. Uh, Dr. Grant Rader is long retired. <laughs> he, was, he was replaced by Dr. Robert Geigley. And over the years, I have admired Dr. Geigley for putting, putting children first. Uh, he has been a tireless advocate for doing what is right and what is needed for children, whether those are the children who um, are part of the second chance program or advocating for increased numbers of psychologists so that children are better served in a more timely manner or seeking um, collaboration with area agencies to serve uh, children with uh, mental health needs. And so um, while I certainly wish Dr. Geigley and the other retirees well in their retirement, um, I will be supporting this resolution with regret because we are losing a consummate educator who has made a positive difference in the lives of so many children. Thank you, Dr. Geigley. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Any other comments this evening on 6A? No? Please call the roll. Garner? 
Aye. Resolution number seven be resolved the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve Mr. <coughs> Paul Hemmer as an expulsion hearing officer for the 2014 15 school year as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion? I had also asked that seven and eight be pulled um, because I wanted to thank administration for coming up with two more names to add to the one that we previous, previously had approved. Um, one of the challenges of scheduling expulsion hearings is doing so in a timely manner to best meet the needs of the students and their families. And um, having three qualified uh, expulsion hearing officers to choose from should make that job one that um, serves our students and their families in a most expeditious manner. So I just wanted to say thank you to administration for the work in bringing these names to us tonight. Thank you. Other comments? Please call the roll. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. 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 Resolution number eight be resolved the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approved Mr. Edward Williams as an expulsion hearing officer for the 2014 15 school year as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion? My comments to number eight would apply. <laughs> number seven, so I, I won't be repetitive in the interest of time here. All right. Other comments? Please call the roll. Aye. 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 Do we have any request? Any uh, requests for future? Uh, excuse me. Do we have any requests for future agenda items? All right. Seeing none. Uh, announcements. Uh, under announcements, I would like to uh, uh, actually. Congratulate Oshkosh North uh, when I saw that they had been singled out by Newsweek uh, as one of uh, America's top schools. I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to uh, congratulate them for all their hard work. Um, uh, other than that, uh, does anyone have any other announcements? Seeing none, uh, could I get a motion to adjourn to executive session? So move. Second. Call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. For the purposes of considering the disciplinary data of specific persons under 19.851F Wisconsin State Statutes adopting expulsion agreement for a high school student who engaged in conduct while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others under 120.13C of Wisconsin State Statutes. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned to executive session.